Welcome to the Retiring Real Estate Investor Podcast, where we will discuss how to defer taxes on the sale of your property, earning passive real estate income, and everything you need to know to go from active investor to passive investor. Join us as we interview passive investment sponsors, explore the journey of other retiring real estate investors, and share our due diligence process we perform to select passive investments. Investment advisory services provided by Insight Investment Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. This podcast is only intended for clients and interested investors residing in the states in which we are registered to provide investment advisory services or exempt from registration. Please contact us to determine if the firm provides investment advisory services in the state where you reside. All content on this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice. Material presented is believed to be reliable sources, and no representations are made by our firm as to another party's informational accuracy or completeness. Insight Investment Advisors LLC and its representatives do not provide tax or legal advice, and nothing herein should be construed as such. Always consult with your tax advisor or attorney regarding your specific circumstances. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Retiring Real Estate Investor Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Bruckman. This is our host, too. It's Josh Wright. Josh, how are you? Hey, doing well. Thank you. Hey, hey, here we are. Hey. We are continuing our, our DST, Delaware Statutory Trust, Megacast. Today, we're going to address a common asked question. What happens with these deals? Once uh, do they get sold, do I hold on to them forever? What happens when I invest in a DST? I, can I get my money out? Like, how does this, how does this thing work, right? After I've We've talked about pros and cons. We've talked about sponsors, how these things work, the tax advantages, but now you've bought in, you're in, you've invested. What happens next? So we want to address that, address that today. Um, so Josh, maybe start with us like, all right, I invested. What happens on, I closed. What happens on day one? I'm in this DNT, DST investment. What happens? Well, once you've made the investment, you've closed, you get a final closing statement. Now your funds are officially, you know, in that deal, you own a percentage of the real estate and you are going to start getting your income off that DST the following month, generally in the middle of the month, somewhere around there, you get a direct deposit to your bank account. Basically from there, you are a passive investor in that, that real estate deal in that DST and you have no responsibility going forward until the deal sells down the road. So from your perspective as a client, you start getting cash flow the next month. You're going to get quarterly reports from the DST sponsor. Um, that's pretty much it until it's done, um, until they sell it. I'm going to add in there during the course of that, there's a distribution that you're receiving. There's usually reporting that you're receiving directly from the DST sponsor, as well as very importantly, the tax documentation that mm -hmm. your CPA is going to need on an annual basis. The DST sponsor is going to put that together and deliver that for you. In fact, uh, your CPA actually might like you a little bit more. <laughs> this is going to be a pretty clean report that they're going to get. And from my understanding of their CPA friends, it's a plug and chug for them um, on that new property, as opposed to maybe a little bit more manual work when you're managing your own property and trying to deliver financial statements to your CPA, maybe a little bit, a little bit better, but that's something that you can also expect as well, uh, that those documents are, are delivered. All right, so I'm chugging along in the DST, I'm getting my payouts. All of a sudden, uh, I get a notice, it says, uh, we're, we're gonna sell this thing. What, well, why did, I come from? why did that happen? So then what happens? What happens when that, that notice hits, uh, hits our inbox that the sponsor does intend to sell the property? Well, First of all, hopefully they're selling at a profit. So let's just throw that in. A there. huge profit. <laughs> huge profit. <laughs> um, so you're going to get a notice as a, as a client, as an owner of a DST interest, you're going to get a notice that they're going to sell. They're going to give you an estimated date as to when it's going to close on that sale. Most of those good sponsors are going to tell you what, uh, you know, high level, what you're going to make in return, both from cash flow while you were in the deal in appreciation on the back end, you should get some estimate of fees at that at that sale as well. And then they're going to ask you how you want to receive your funds. Do you want to do another 1031 exchange? If so, they want to know what QI, what qualified intermediary they should contact. 
or they're going to ask if you don't want to do that, do you want to just get cash out or do you want to do a partial 1031 exchange? Um, from there, you know, you need to fill out that form. We help our clients do that. We're going to hopefully you're going to do another 1031. And we're going to get in touch with your qualified intermediary. And then you're, you're just sitting there until they actually execute the closing. Once they sell and close, it's just like closing any other real estate transaction. You're going to get um, a notice when they close. You're going to have to sign something most likely from your qualified intermediary. Funds are going to hit your exchange account. That's pretty much it. And then from there, the 1031 exchange clock starts over again, and we're going to repeat the process. Yeah, you're kind of back sure. to square one, right? Uh, from where you mm -hmm. started, hopefully, as, as you described, with that cash flow of the course of the deal, and then the appreciation as well. You know, we remind people that that's coming your way too. Um, and the sponsor, um, we like to talk about those decision points. Like, well, why does a sponsor sell? Well, they just hold it forever. And there's two reasons why they would or could sell. One is the debt on the vast majority of the DSTs is fixed in terms of the duration. So if, if that DST has 10 year debt on it, we got to sell in 10 years. We can't necessarily restructure that debt. So there is on, on debt deals, there's a time clock. On deals without debt or generally a decision to sell um, is really backed by market conditions would, would sort of enforce that. Um, when sponsors see great deals uh, in the marketplace to sell, they're, they're going to do that. Most sponsors are, are incentivized to make money for you. They want you to continue. They want to be in this business and they want to continue to have you as a client. And a great way to do that is to, to deliver some returns, right? And then to kind of cycle you back into, hopefully you want to stay with the DST marketplace um, uh, for us. And it makes it really simple. Most folks get really, really, uh, not I don't want to say addicted to passive income, but it's pretty good. <laughs> you can always 1031 exchange into back out and go buy another property for yourself that you manage. You can always do that. Nothing precluding you from doing that. Um, but most of the time we're back to making a selection of the DST, but it does get a little confusing, I think, for our clients to understand when, why, how, who are you going to sell this property to? Why not just hang on to it forever? Yeah, I mean, I always tell clients, think about it in terms of whatever the business plan is for that real estate deal right from the beginning for that DSC. Um, we know ahead of time, we've done due diligence on that deal. We know that that DST sponsor, let's say, is planning to hold that property seven to 10 years. Okay. So why would they not, you know, think in terms that's probably going to happen, but if, if it doesn't, why wouldn't it? Well, there's only two reasons they're going to sell earlier than that. In most cases, it's either going to be defensive or offensive, right? If somebody comes along and offers them money for this property that meets the goals they had for 10 years down the road or exceeds those goals, they'd be fools not to consider taking that offer. It's just like any real estate deal. They're an owner or they want their owners to make money. On the flip side, if they see market conditions getting worse and it would make sense to make a defensive sale, then they need to do that as well. A good sponsor, I hope, would do that. In our opinion, would do that. Um, you certainly would not want to hold property right up to the last minute just because you don't want to take a loss on something. So, you know, we, we kind of look at deals from that perspective. What's the original plan and then what could happen you know, both to the positive and the negative case, mm -hmm. why would they not follow that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're asking those questions sort of up front, the due diligence of, you know, what's your sort of estimated time frame, and then who do you think is going to buy it? Like, what is that, like characterize the pools of buyers that would exist for, for these assets? Like who, who would step in and do that? This is a very important thing for us to sort of understand up front, but I do think investors struggle with it a bit because it is, a bit ambiguous, like we don't know exactly when, when folks are gonna sell. We can give an estimate. So the, the biggest sponsors in the DST space since 2004 have held on to these slightly over eight years. And we've watched that timeline come down or shrink a little bit over the past few years as real estate values have gone up dramatically. We've watched these cycle faster and sell quicker, but we just, mm -hmm. we just don't know. At the end of the day, we don't know. And it's pretty important that we're telling folks to, to really plan for in worst case scenario, you really got to plan for a 10 year time frame if you're looking for a quicker turn. Um, but eight years has been sort of average. Yeah, we see some deals too where they've got a stated objective to be even faster than that, but it's not not near as common 
as that that seven to 10 years seems to be the standard, at least for right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want we want a long enough timeline here, too. I mean, if we're constantly churning deals, there's an expense associated with that of buying and selling real estate all the time. Um, mm -hmm. that I don't think meets the inject objective of a lot of our investors. And frankly, a lot of investors that are looking at DST period. I think they're looking for a longer, a longer time frame where they don't have to really worry about making these decisions all the time. Or again, it's not, not the point. The point is to be passive. I can't be passive if I'm constantly doing 1031 exchanges and, and mm -hmm. buying and selling DSTs. That's, that sounds very active. So there is some shared intent yeah. here to hold a bit longer. I've I've actually had that come up with clients mm. <laughs> specifically in the last couple of years. <laughs> you know, I've got a, I have a I have a, a DST right now for a client that is selling, and it is selling much faster than planned. I mean, it's been about three years, mm -hmm. a little little under three years. We thought it would be seven to eight years at least. Um, I got a little pushback from the client because he didn't want to have to mess with this again but he's making 50% plus returns on his money. So he's not complaining about that either. You know, it's just, it just comes with it. It was a great sell at, a, at an opportune time and it was a well above market offer. You know, the, these DST sponsors still have a duty to their clients and uh, to the owners and clients are doing really well, so. And there's an economic consideration here too. Um, inside it, since DST is a closed structure, I can't tap that equity during the course of the deal, right? And so there's an economic component when you're starting to look at cash returns, you're like, hey, we're doing great on this. Like, well, yeah, cash on cash, you know, equity invested, uh, the distribu distributions divided by equity invested looks really great. What if you consider the actual value of the property today and then the distributions on that equity? In essence, you have some trapped equity in these deals, especially those that have made a ton of money. I'd like to get that out, please. So I can start making some money on that money that I made, right? That's the whole point. Put the little soldiers out there and they bring back other uh, rewards with them. I can't deploy the soldiers. That's a problem. So I, I you know, I'd encourage folks to look at it that way too is, yes, yeah, kind of a pain that you got to talk to Josh and Brandon again. That's no fun, right? Because <laughs> we're not any fun. <laughs> But lucky you, lucky, lucky you. you, lucky you, our wives would say. <laughs> um, but we, hey, we got to cycle this capital. It's a good for you from an economic perspective. I mean, we hear a lot of that from clients coming into the DST space that their equity is trapped in markets where they can't raise rent and make the subsequent returns that they expected to um, that doesn't keep up with the value of their property. So they, they're coming to us with trap capital and they want to unlock it. Um, the same case here in some of these deals that may move faster, but folks are making money. It's a good thing. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. So that's what happens. Uh, so, all right, that's summarized. I don't want to belabor this point either. Um, what happens when you're a DST? Distributions come, tax docs come. We wait, we sit, we collect money. Eventually the sponsor will make a decision to sell. We don't know exactly when that will be. We got a rough, rough a pretty decent idea when that could happen. And then our decision points um, are the same that we had when we entered. We do a 1031 exchange and we decide what we want to do and where we want to reinvest reinvest those funds. And it's that simple, right? What I miss? You nailed it, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we hope we see more deals full cycling um, and making, making lots of money for people way above the expectations um, that we've seen. Obviously, no guarantee in that, but... Yeah, I mean, this marketplace still presents great opportunities to sell appreciated real estate. So, hey, man, we'll see some I'm more. Never, I'm never going to complain about a DST sponsor exiting a piece of property, uh, especially at a profit. You know, to get liquid in a DST um, is a good thing most of the time. So we're, we're going to take that. You know, we'll go on to the next deal. We'll deal with whatever. But um, you got to take those take those shots when you can. We will take W's and mark the scoreboard accordingly. Awesome. Josh, thanks so much. That is DST's Full Cycling. Uh, we'll do another one. What should we do next? I'm looking at my list. I want to talk about... Oh, hmm. can we go through the offering materials? Lord almighty. Can we do that? Look at that. Uh, will you let us do that, Josh? 
structure or compliance. How long is that going to take? I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to put that on screen for folks to see offering what the offering docs look like. So we can get really. I don't, cool. I don't think we have time for that. <laughs> not today. We're not doing it today. We'll do it on another one. You definitely do it, but I don't think we got time for no, that. No, not today, today, dude. That's the next one. I want to keep people excited. Time for that. Josh is sweating for folks that. I can't see on video. He's like, no, we can't do that today. <laughs> we will. We'll go through we'll go through some sample you're offerings. You're gonna cause me you're gonna cause me to swear on camera <laughs> when we get into these documents. Uh, we'll just edit it out. That's how good we'll see how good the editing group is. But hey, <laughs> listeners, next one we're gonna we're gonna get into some offering docs so you can see what and see what that looks like. That's when you're gonna want a video for sure. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of what that looks like and we'll we'll kind of take the intimidation off of the size of some of those those offering docs and and show you where to focus and what we're kind of we're kind of looking hey, at. Hey. Everybody reads five hundred page PPMs on the weekends, man. It's normal. Nope, it's just you and I. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. Uh, so until next time folks 500 page next time 500 page docs it's going to be so exciting kidding. we'll make we'll make <laughs> it as fun play, as possible we'll play some background music for that one just to keep you in it <laughs> oh, i just i hear this like horrible elevator music like playing in my head now <laughs> no no page some, some 230 jazz, buddy. page 235 <laughs> uh be fun josh thank you so much all right Thanks. See, See you guys. Thanks for listening, everybody. Take care.